Hello everybody. Hope everyone had a wonderful weekend. We had a three-day holiday weekend, so got a lot done. Um, as you can tell, we also got several videos done. Um, but I've just got some news here and uh, several pieces of news that I wanted to share. Now, first of all, I want to thank Matt very much for giving me the link to the Queensland article. This is in Australia and I'm going to put the link down below and um, I am going to grab this article and put it in a PDF because sometimes you're allowed to read it once and then when you go back it wants you to subscribe. Um, Priests in Queensland will now be compelled to break the seal of confession to report child sex abuse or face three years in jail. I'll let that sink in. Now we know Watchtower has been claiming clergy, penitent, confessional privilege in some of their court cases, you know, and confidentiality. So this is very good news for the survivors because and I would love to see a law like this passed everywhere but you know which means elders also if elders do not report the abuse guess what going to jail new laws passed through Queensland Parliament will force members of the clergy to report known or suspected cases of abuse to police See, even just an allegation, whether it's they know it or not, you know, they're still supposed to report it. The legislation means religious institutions and their members are no longer able to use the sanctity of confessional as a defense or excuse in child sex abuse matters. Police Minister Mark Ryan said the laws would ensure better protection for vulnerable children. The requirement and quite frankly the moral obligation to report concerning behaviors towards children applies to everyone, everyone in this community. So Watchtower can't say, oh well it doesn't apply to us. Yeah, everyone, everyone in a community has that obligation. No one group or occupation is being singled out. Child protection is everyone's responsibility. I agree. The laws apply to information received from now even if it relates to abuse that occurred in the past. So from here on out, the law was supported by the opposition. They will go to jail before obeying. <laughs> but One Nation MP Stephen Andrews said it said it set a dangerous precedent for religious leaders. The bill poses a real danger for public trust and cohesion in our community, Mr. Andrews said. Yeah, but what about all of these elders and the rank and file that don't have a clue? They have been lied to for years that, oh, it's just an isolated case in Jehovah's Witnesses. Figures. Many priests and bishops have publicly stated they will go to jail before obeying these laws. Do you guys see how their attitude is? They would rather keep the confidentiality than protect children. They deserve to go to jail. How confident can the people of Queensland be that they live in a free and open democracy governed by the rule of law where the state jails its bishops? Well, if you're not protecting kids, then you deserve to go to jail. <laughs> I'd like to see a few governing body go there too. Members of the Catholic Church in Queensland have previously voiced their opposition to the laws. Of course, and I'm sure Washar and the Mormons and all the others would be right there with them. Earlier this year, Brisbane Catholic Archbishop Mark Coleridge told the ABC he believed breaking the confessional seal would not make a difference to the safety of young people. But see, look at, you know, we are all familiar with Watchtower. And Washar says, oh, well, if there's a law that mandatory reporting, then we will do it. 
they're trying to break this secret confidentiality with these perpetrators it's about morality Hetty Johnston from the child protection group Bravehearts expressed her support for the new laws exactly it's a moral obligation forget the church rules it's a moral obligation I don't think there's enough jail time in the world that would replace a child's innocence I totally agree what sort of punishment is suitable for someone who would allow that to happen yeah so I don't know that it's about time it's about morality the laws enact recommendations of the Royal Commission into institutional responses to child sex abuse good the passing of the law also coincides with Queensland child protection week great and then they've got some other articles down below like from that Catholic priest yeah so this is good news and I'm happy to see this I, I really am now something else I wanted to mention I want to thank Chris yes our buddy Chris first it was Uganda then it was Nambia now it's the Bahamas I'm gonna put the link down below it looks like this case was from 2010 and um, Chris I've been digging myself and I haven't been able to actually find a judgment either so I don't know if there was a final judgment I mean are they still fighting it I don't know but anyway I'm gonna put the link down below to the court documents and yes Watchtower is trying to say it doesn't apply to them big surprise and uh, there's a court document here for that the Court of Appeals I tell you we have the best viewers now something else I wanted to cover um, we've got some Pimos or Zemos whatever you want to call them messaging us and sending us information and um, someone sent me this from a forum uh, let's see I don't see what for oh it looks like it's from Jehovah's Witness .com. Um, topic is my country preaching work over and so I'm gonna read this but before I do I want to mention an email we got yesterday thank you sweetie is the preaching work done email for field zoom meetings the elders in my husband's congregation are one sending a zoom invitation two days before I know number two sending a phone text two hours before their field zoom meeting I thought they would be having these zoom meetings every morning you know so they could do their letter writing I don't know number three follow-up email the day after to remind the group what to follow through on from the meeting I think the attendance has been dropping off and we're hearing a lot who are sick of the letter writing and phone calling and <laughs> you know the abuse the witnesses are taking from the phone calls they're making see this is what happens when you just open a phone book and start calling people because people out in the world all they have to do is go on YouTube and they're not afraid to watch videos about Jehovah's Witnesses okay this is from the forum the JW's in my country can't preach to anyone these days and they're going crazy I live in Romania and initially during the COVID-19 lockdown they were very enthusiastic about preaching they've since held daily field service meetings on zoom okay that answers us that question they wrote letters to all kinds of people and pestered them with phone calls and we know that you know I did that article that was in the newspaper down south somewhere where they said they got a hold of all of the public names and phone numbers and addresses and was contacting all of them 
this gets interesting. Um, the elders found online phone books and assigned territories. They would bother strangers in very awkward, unwanted phone calls asking their moronic JW questions. And, you know, I've done videos. I've gotten several phone calls now, you know, even one looking for deaf people to talk, that they, if we knew of any deaf people in our community, and they didn't want to really tell me that they were Jehovah's Witnesses. And I told them, I'm not telling you anything at all about anyone in this community. It's none of your damn business. <laughs> um, back to the forum here. People didn't take kindly to being constantly bothered with phone calls from strangers, so they threatened the websites that published their phone numbers to sue. In the EU, there are various laws, and that's European Union, I believe. See, and that's the thing. In Europe, they have data protection laws now, and you can't be publishing, even if you do, like, not at homes and how we used to write down their um, address, and if we could possibly get their name and phone number, we would write it down in our little book. They can't do that anymore like the GDPR, that regulate breaking privacy and using other people's personal information very strictly. Publishing someone's phone number without their consent is basically illegal. Yeah, I know. We had it done to us by someone in the community. They put it on their website, all of our information, and we had to hire a lawyer to get a cease and desist. They not only put our phone number, it was a document they had found with the New Mexico government and it had our both addresses, our physical and our mailing and our phone numbers and our full names. Yep. Um, giving them unwanted phone calls repeatedly and bothering them is illegal. Writing them unsolicited letters is illegal. And like we said, here in this country, writing them unwanted letters may not be illegal in the United States, but the post office was really ticked off because it was overloading, you know, their sorting. They don't have a sorting machine in our post office. That's how small it is. The two workers that work there hand sort all of this mail it, first thing in the morning. So you can see why they were burdened down with thousands of letters from Jehovah's Witness Boleyn congregation going out to everyone in this valley. Yeah. Um, having a conversation and broadcasting that private conversation on Zoom without consent is also illegal. And this is where some of the PIMOs were having issues with the Zoom meetings because you would have to sign in and let them know who you are and turn your camera on. So this was violating, you know, their privacy data. JWs were basically breaking the law and people have had enough after months of being harassed. I know of a lot of people who are complaining, complaining to their post office, phone companies, oh yeah. Now the preaching work is basically gone. Those websites with phone registries were taken down. They aren't allowed to write letters to strangers anymore. They can't call strangers anymore. Even their friends and family have had enough of their preaching work after months of daily calls on religious matters. Now the CO, circuit overseer, is encouraging them to do pioneering, but they don't have anyone to preach to and they're going crazy. It's quite hilarious. Anything similar happening in your country? I expect similar things happening in most European countries. Well, even in the United States, that's happening. A lot of, you know, the public are just, have had enough. They've had enough. And now Watchtower wants to do this campaign starting November 1st to send out all these letters 
to businesses and local officials? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's what I say. <laughs> so I want to thank all of you for watching. And um, we appreciate all your comments underneath our videos and emails and um, we appreciate the love and support and all of your help my goodness so many of you are sending me information and if there's something I need to see immediately put urgent in the subject line and uh, that way you know I will see it because sometimes I get so many emails during a day that it will actually go to like the second or third page and I may not see something important so anyway thank you for watching and you all have a wonderful day bye